welcome you to the 92nd Street Church of Christ. We know that this is quite a different time, isn't it? Time when people are stressed, time when everything's closed down except for the grocery stores maybe and the pharmacies. And so we're gathered here this morning to be able to worship our God. And worship is a part of our lives. In Romans the 12th chapter verses 1 and 2, the Roman writer Paul says that our everyday life is our spiritual service of worship. But we gather here corporately as brothers and sisters in Christ to not only hear a message from God's word, but also to <coughs> share communion together. And so we'll be doing that in just a few moments. The music that you're hearing is from uh, Praise and Harmony through acapella. And we think that this is inspiring and helps us during these difficult times. God bless you as you've joined us this morning, and God bless his word as we impart it one to another. Good morning to the handful of people that are present here this morning with me, uh, but also good morning to all of you that are in your homes this morning uh, watching as we uh, uh, try to uh, have a service uh, uh, in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, and hopefully to try and continue on and normally do on Sunday mornings, and that's to uh, worship in our own ways. Uh, before we uh, partake of the Lord's Supper, we, uh, we normally set aside this time uh, uh, for uh, the opportunity to give back to, to, uh, to God, for the work of the church, and so forth. Uh, we're not able to do what we normally do, but I uh, um, want to remind everyone that the emails have been sent out uh, Given you the information necessary to uh, give online through an app called Zell. The details of that are on that uh, email that uh, should have been sent to every member of the church. So uh, that's available and keeps the opportunity open to comply with uh, what we're uh, uh, requested to do by Scripture. And just before I get into the Lord's Supper, I just want to read a quick passage that has to do with uh, giving. Um, and that is uh, 1 Corinthians in chapter 16, uh, verse 1 through uh, uh, 3. Now about the collection for God's people. Do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Um, anyway, at this time we're gonna we're gonna uh, move on to uh, uh, the Lord's Supper, and uh, you, you know we uh, we do that every week here, and uh, uh, we think it's so important to recognize our Savior as often as we can, uh, and you know in the times that uh, we're going through right now. Uh, with this unique situation with the coronavirus and the ramifications that it's got on on the entire world, actually. And, uh, yeah, you know, you read the news and, and there's a lot of uh, discussion about how uh, anxious and how upset everyone is. And uh, they need answers, they need comfort, they need this and that. And a lot of people apparently have, have a very difficult time dealing with some of the uh, emotional issues that come along with worrying about where this whole thing leads. Uh, we as Christians don't need to lose a lot of sleep over all of this because we know no matter what the outcome is that we are held safely in his arms, whether it's on this earth or in the new heaven and earth. So uh, we have so much to be thankful for and so much to remember uh, of our Christ Jesus that offers that comfort and so many other things and so many other blessings. So when we remember his life, we have so many things to be thankful for. And that, that uh, comforting arm that is always there is one of the biggest ones. Uh, specifically, as we partake of the Lord's Supper, we want to remember that Christ hung on a cross, that he died and was buried in, and, uh, in death and, and rose again by that resurrection, through that sacrifice, gave us the opportunity uh, for salvation and to be with him in eternity. 
Um, Christ wanted us to remember him and what he'd done, and so he instituted the Lord's Supper for that purpose. And um, a description of how that took place can be found in 1 Corinthians, uh, the 11th chapter. Uh, I want to read briefly uh, that passage, starting in uh, verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. Uh, with that, we're going to uh, partake of the bread, uh, which is the uh, body of Christ. Uh, I'm going to ask Paul to uh, offer up a blessing as we partake of that bread. He bows me. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to remember Christ on the cross, which this bread represents his body, that it nailed to the cross the things in the Old Testament that were against us, contrary to us, and nailed them to the cross. Remember Christ on the cross, in the name of Jesus Christ. Partake of the bread, the body of Christ, and the uh, particular fruit of the vine, and the blood of Christ. And uh, again, I'm going to ask Paul to uh, offer up a prayer. Holy Father, in continuance of our remembrance of Christ on the cross, his precious blood cleanseth us our souls, which the Old Testament only rolls sins ahead. His blood purifieth our souls. This we do in remembrance of Christ. In his blood, in his name we pray. Amen. to have all of you here this morning and as we open God's Word we realize that God's Word is our hope for the future but also our assurance for today. Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy the first chapter and beginning in verse 7 these words that apply to us today. For God has not given us a, the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Really, that should be the theme of every single Christian today, that no matter what we're going through, no matter what pitfalls come our way or what joys are ours, we realize that God is with us. We have a sound mind because of the scriptures. We have the power of love, the love of God, that guides us through all of these things. On Wednesday, March 11th, 
the World Health Organization announced a pandemic throughout the whole world. We didn't really understand what all that meant because none of us in our lifetime have gone through that. But it meant some real changes for all of us, didn't it? It meant that many of us were secluded to our homes, only to go to the grocery store and maybe to the pharmacy. That we couldn't be together as a body of Christ like we normally are together. That our times of Bible study were put on hold, or at least done this way, through the internet. And not everybody has the ability to look at the internet. So we gather here today to think about what God has done for us. What do we do in a crisis like this? How do we take care of ourselves? Well, we know that there are several ways to do that. We have to realize that our trust is not in self, but in, in God. And one of the first ways that helps me to get through a crisis of any type is to talk to God in prayer. Concentrate on prayer. Now that sounds pretty simple, but for those of us who are, do not have a great prayer life, it's kind of a strange thing. One of the things that prayer life does is helps us to build our relationship with God. And as we build that relationship, we become more of a friend of God. We are his creation, and we're to worship him and praise him. But he wants us to talk to him. I think it would be a pretty strange world if we were raised as a, in a family and we never spoke to our dad, never spoke to our father. Well, it would be just odd. God wants us to talk to him. We do that through his son, Jesus Christ, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sins so that we can approach the Father. It's a privilege that the world does not understand, but Christians understand. So we need to concentrate on prayer. We need to go before his throne of grace, not just once a week or every time we sit down to eat a meal, but every moment every day. Paul said he prayed without ceasing. His life was a continual prayer, a continual allegiance to God. Everything that he did, he was in prayer to God, that God would guide him and lead him. As Christians, we can respond to this crisis with peace and calm because God has already won the battle. The battle from Satan has already been won. In Genesis 3 and verse 15, the Bible says that he will bruise his head and thou shalt bruise thy heel. Jesus gave Satan the death blow. And because of that, we today can be here in peace and comfort and safety. And know that no matter what happens in the world around us, and even in our own lives, we have hope future. Reminds me of the story of a king. His name was Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat's story is found in 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. And he is being surrounded now by his enemies. The enemies that were surrounding Jerusalem, or surrounding Israel, rather, the land of promise. And they were frightened. And they didn't know what to do because Edom and Ammon were coming down to destroy them. So Jehoshaphat says this to the Lord. Turn to 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, verse 5. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. And he said, O Lord, the God of our fathers, are you not the God in the heavens? Are you not the ruler of all the kingdoms of the nations? Power and might are in your hand, so that no one can stand against you. Did you not, O oh, our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it and give it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever? They have lived in it and have built you a sanctuary there. For your name saying, shall evil come upon this, us, the sword or judgment or pestilence or famine, 
We will stand before the house and before you, for your name is in this house. And then if you skip down to verse 12, this is a prayer of uh, Jehoshaphat. And then at the end of this prayer, he says, Oh, our God, you will not will you not judge them? For we have no peace to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. I think we're a lot like Jehoshaphat, aren't we? There is a time right now that we don't really know what to do. It's a different world than we've ever experienced before. And people say, we don't know what to do. And so we need to talk to God about what to do. That's exactly what Jehoshaphat did. He was afraid of the armies, but he says, we're going to stand here at the doors of your temple, God, and you will hear us and know what our plea is, and you will answer us. God answers our prayers. He brings us peace when there is chaos. He brings us calm when there is strife around us. I think about those early New Testament Christians who, after being obedient to Christ, now found themselves in the arenas to be torn apart by wild animals. And I read in Ox's Book of Martyrs and, and other places from Josephus where those Christians would be arm, uh, locked arm in arm as they'd walk into the arenas singing praises to God, knowing that in the next few seconds the wild animals would destroy them. And yet their peace was with God. They were calm in their soul. And we're not facing that today. We're facing something that we don't understand. Our president said we are at war with this invisible enemy, and that's really true. So we're told to be careful, to wash our hands, to do simple things that our mothers taught us when we were children. We wash our hands, to stay away from each other, to not go out in big crowds where others who may have already been part of this virus or a carrier of this virus uh, is transport, uh, transport, transported to other people. So Jehoshaphat says, God, we don't know what to do. We're scared, but we know you do, and so we ask you to be with us. We can pray or we can worry. What do we usually do when things come up against us that we don't understand? Well, the, the correct answer, if we were in the assembly, is, well, Lord, we pray. But the truth is, too many of us worry. We worry about things that we can't change. Worry really does us no good at all. Jesus addressed that in the book of Matthew when he says, Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, and neither do they spin. And yet even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Why? Because God is in control, and we need to be calm in our souls and realize that God is with us. And we need to talk with him about our feelings, about our joys, as well as about our sorrows. And when we share it with him, he gives us a peace and a calm that the world does not understand. Listen to what the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Philippi in Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Why did Paul write that? Just because he had to say something? No, because he knew it was the truth. And we don't need to be anxious about the things around us, but we need to talk to God about them. That's why Paul wrote that to the Philippian church. Also, we need to be praying for those who are on the front lines. We need to be praying for all those who have been infected, for those who are going through difficult times, just trying to get breath, and trying to be able to speak, and trying to be able to go through and to, and to come out of the, on the other side well. We need to be praying for the doctors, those on the front line, the nurses, the emergency responders, medical personnel, the leaders of our nation. We need to be praying for one another to help us to get through those things. We 
need to be praying for ourselves that God will give us peace and calm during a very difficult time. It's a time when the rest of the world didn't know what to do. And now we're here. And we must face those things with God on our side. Jesus tells us, or Paul tells us, the Ephesian letter to the Lord, put on the full armor of God so that we can wow off the fiery darts of the evil one. Satan will do anything that he can to destroy the church and to destroy Christianity. But those are the times when we need to put on the armor of God, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, have our feet shod with the gospel of Christ the sword of the Spirit. We need to spend time in the sword of the Spirit, learning how God protects and cares for us and how He loves us. So we need to be praying for ourselves as well as all those around us who are suffering and those who are in the front lines, those in the hospitals and those in the pharmacies and those in the grocery store. The list could go on and on and on. There are people who are willing to stand up and to be there for the needs of other people. Secondly, we need to control our minds. That's a difficult thing to do. We need to let our minds be captured with the love of Christ. Listen to what Paul wrote to Timothy, which again is what we read as our scripture this morning. 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. We need to be people who are people of power, people of love, the love of Christ. And we have a sound mind because it is educated in the, in the cause of Jesus Christ. Oswald Chambers wrote these words, Your mind is the greatest gift that God has given you. And it ought to be devoted entirely to him. You should seek to bring every thought into captivity in obe into obedience of Christ. And then he went on telling us that our minds need to be focused on Christ. Well, that's true. And for the Christian, that sounds good as we assemble together. But what about our everyday life? What about when the children are home now for the first time? and not in school any longer. I remember the anxious moments that we had when our, when our daughters were home and they had to go to the first grade by themselves, preschool. How anxious we were. What are we going to do without them being home? Now they're in school, and now we ask the question, what are we going to do now that they're not in school? It's an anxious time. And we have to change the paradigm as to where we are what we're doing because we still love them. They still need to be cared for. They need to be taught. What an opportunity to, to share with them the knowledge that we have. To share with them the wonders of God's love and show him that love by the way we care for other people. Someone wrote, the power that banishes fear is a sound mind. Let God control your thinking. Fill your mind with scripture. So that's how we control our mind. We need to imagine the future with Christ. What is worry? The definition of worry is, is imagining the future without Christ. Can you imagine what the future would be without Christ in this world? For those of us who walk with Christ, are striving to live for Christ, and we're fulfilling those promises of Christ, and realize that he walks with us and loves us and cares about us, the world be like without Christ? What will the world be like if God turned his face away from this world? See, we need to rely on God. We need to rely on Christ. Isaiah put it this way in Isaiah, the 26th chapter, in verse 3. You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast, because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. The Lord is the rock. He is our rock. He is our salvation. He is the one that we lean upon. And we have perfect peace in him when we trust in him. It kind of reminds me of the story. I heard it this week and I thought I'd share it with you. Of the airplane that was going uh, 
was a full airplane that was going from Chicago, Illinois to Seattle, Washington. And you know, you've probably been there when the pilot comes on the speaker and says, please fasten your seat belts. We're not going to be serving any refreshments right now because we're going to go through some turbulence. So you fasten your seat belts. As they fastened their seat belt, one of the turbulence took them way high and then dropped them like a rock. It felt like they were going to crash. And this just happened over and over and over again. If you've ever been on an airplane, you know what that's like. But a minister was sitting across the aisle from a young girl. This girl had her legs folded up behind her, and she was reading a book. And she was as calm as she could be. And looking around the plane, everybody else was kind of moaning and, and upset every time there would be a big turbulent, but she sat very, very still. She'd close her eyes a minute, then she'd open them and begin to read some more, and she was calm throughout the flight. Finally, finally, the plane landed. When it landed, everybody, as they always do, rushed to the aisles to get off of the airplane, but the minister stayed back, and he walked by the young girl and said, how could you remain so calm during all these turbulence and all this difficult time? She said, my daddy is the pilot. He's taking me home. I'm not worried about what's going to happen because my dad cares about me. We have a father who cares about us. We don't have to worry about the things that surround us. He provides for us. He even knows the number of hair he knows all the things that we need, and he has provided them for us. That's his promise to us. I dare say none of us have gone without food. All of us have shelter. All of us have a place to lay our head at night. We are blessed by God. And yet it's easy to gripe and to grumble because we can't do exactly what we want when we want to. We just don't want to spread the virus. So we need to control our minds. In Corey Tim Boom's, uh, Tim Boom's book called The Hiding Place, there's a phrase in there and a, a passage where she and Betsy, her sister, had been moved to Ravenstock, which is probably the worst prison that, that the Nazis could put up. It was a horrible place, a dark and dank place. And as they were now brought to this new prison, they realized that there were fleas all throughout their bed and all throughout the jail cells. And so Corey said she began to be pretty discouraged. And Betsy said, you know, we need to thank God for our blessings. Our blessings? Thank God for the fleas. Because now they could worship as they wanted. They could sing hymns. They weren't molested now by the, by the uh, guards in the prison. And so she said, we thank God for the fleas. And that's the reason that the guards didn't come in, because they didn't want the fleas either. So even in the toughest of times, we can find places and ways to be able to thank our God. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. That's one of her quotes. If you look at the world, you'll be dis distressed. If you look within yourself, you'll be depressed. If you look at God, you'll be at rest. Another one of her. And then one of her quotes is, don't pray when you, when you feel like it. Have an appointment with the Lord and keep it. Do we have a, an appointment with God every single day that we spend this time in prayer? Maybe when we first get up in the morning. Maybe before we put our feet on the floor and do all the things that we need to do. Maybe that's our time of prayer. Or maybe it's the time just before we go to sleep. You ever gone to sleep praying to God? And you think, oh God, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to fall asleep on you. What a beautiful way to be able to stop a day and end a day in prayer to God. <clears throat> the phrase, do not be afraid, is written in the Bible 365 times. There's 365 reminders that we don't need to be afraid. God is with us and God cares for us and loves us. Someone said a fearful world needs fearless Christians. 
So we need to calm our minds. We need to count our blessings. We need to claim our promises. Look at all the promises that we have in the Bible, especially in the New Testament. That as Christians, we're promised not only a life here, but a life eternal. No matter what happens here, God says, when we come to the end of this physical life, he has a home prepared for us. Jesus in John the 14th chapter said, In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. And you know the way that I'm going. And Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How do we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. If you would have known me, you'd know my Father also. From now on, you have known him, and you have seen him. God has prepared a place for us, and he prepared it because he sent his Son into the world to live a perfect life and to die upon the cross for us, where our sins could be washed away by the precious blood that he shed. The Bible is filled with promises. I looked at Psalms, the 56th chapter, verses 3 and 4. And of course, David was surrounded, were captured here by the, by the, by the uh, a nation. And as they captured him, he was afraid. But listen to what he says. Why am I afraid? I will put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise. In God I have put my trust. I shall not be afraid. Here he's surrounded by the Philistines felt like his life was coming to an end. And yet he said, I'm not fearful. I'm not going to worry about it, for God is my God, and he takes care of me. And then Isaiah gives us these words of encouragement in Isaiah 12 and verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. And then the Hebrew writer for us today in Hebrews the 13th chapter verses 5 and 6 says, Make sure that your character is free from the love of money. Be content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. So that we can confidently say, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? Consider the responsibilities that we have in Christ Jesus. Again, Paul says in Philippians 1 and verse 21, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Don't worry about the things in this life. God takes care of us. Just like he takes care of the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. He takes care of us today. So we need to continually encourage one another. Consider your responsibilities. What some of our responsibilities? What can I do to make a difference in this time of separation? Well, I can text. I don't spell real well, but I can text, and people usually get the message. Or now we can even speak it in our phones, and even though it doesn't always come out exactly right, the people that we text usually get the message. I can also pick up my phone and encourage someone on the telephone. How's your day going? I was just thinking about you today. There was a scripture that I read today. Can I share it with you? Can I pray with you over the phone? One of the greatest privileges that I've had and have in my Christian life is to be able to talk to people on the phone and pray with them when they're going through a struggle or when they have something that's joyous that's happened in their lives. Let's pray about it. Let's thank God for it. What an opportunity. You know what that does whenever you pray together? It brings you closer to one another. Maybe not physically, but we begin to know one another better and care about one another even more. Maybe you could even email if you have that capability. There are so many ways that we can make a difference if we'll consider the responsibilities that we have as a Christian. And then finally, we need to continue our work. But what is the work of a Christian? Well, first of all, I think it's to study God's word at home. I don't have to come down to the building, to an office.
else to study, I can study at home. I can spend time in prayer, and I can write letters of encouragement. That's almost something that's unheard of anymore. Sit, sit down and write a letter. But what a joy that is to receive a card or a letter from somebody who is thinking about you. They put little words of encouragement in there for you. Isn't it nice when you get the mail that is addressed to you and there's a card there or a letter from somebody that cares about you? We can do those things. And those things don't cost very much, if anything, at all. I need to provide for other people. As I talk to them on the phone, I'll ask them, is there something that you can that you need that maybe I can provide for you? I know we have several members of our congregation that call, it seems like on a regular basis. Anything we can do, anything we can bring you, we'll just put it on your front porch. You don't have to talk to me, you don't have to shake my hand, but but you have a need, and I can meet that need. And that's one of the ways that we can take care of our responsibility and continue our work in Christ Jesus. The words, be strong, is found some 36 times in the Bible. 36 times it tells us to be strong. Many of those times it says, be strong and courageous and do not be afraid. We have a hymn that we sing about that. It's taken right from God's word. 36 times we can be reminded, be strong and courageous. Listen to what the Ephesian writer of the Apostle Paul wrote to us in Ephesians the 6th chapter, verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God that you'll be able, so that you'll be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers of against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Why does Paul write that to the church at Ephesus? Because they were fearful, because they had struggles just like we do. Do not be afraid, Paul says, for we have a force that the world does not know, but that the world can have when they're obedient to Christ Jesus. The phrase, again, do not be afraid, is written in the Bible 365 times, 365 days out of the year, that we can be encouraged and not be afraid. How about you this morning? If you're not a Christian, now is the time to rethink where you want to spend eternity. If you want to spend eternity with God, then God asks you to be obedient, to repent of your sins, to confess his name before men, to be buried with him in baptism, and to rise from that watery grave of baptism as a brand new person. All your sins are washed away. And then 1 John 1 and 7 says that the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. It's a continual cleansing once you're obedient to Christ. And if you are a Christian, find yourself just being discouraged. I challenge you to spend a little time in God's word. He will encourage you through his scriptures. May God bless you. As you continue this day and on through the week, we may be meeting like this for several weeks. We just don't know. I hope you've been encouraged this morning by listening to God's word and sharing with me some of the promises that God has for us. May God bless you. Sermon, uh, Dennis mentioned the varying natures of, uh, of uh, prayer and, and the many different types of prayer that can be can be made. We can give thanks in the morning for another day. We can uh, give thanks for all the many blessings that we've received. We can pray for help. We can just do all kinds of things by way of prayer. We can have opening prayers and closing prayers. Closing prayers are what we're about to have. One other thing, though, is that for all of those that are uh, members of the congregation, we know that uh, uh, we have an elder's prayer Usually we have an auditorium full of uh, people, and invariably we have special requests uh, for help with whatever it might be that a person uh, is having uh, trouble with. So, uh, and uh, we can't really do that the way that we normally do it. But uh, uh, the eldership wants you.
going to know that if there's an issue that you have or that you need special prayers, get a hold of uh, one of the elders. Our phone numbers are in the, uh, in the record there. So call any of us and uh, let us know what that need might be. And, and we'll, uh, we'll get together as the eldership and, and we'll pray on, pray on your behalf. So uh, go ahead and uh, let any one of us know what those needs might be. And uh, so with that, uh, we're going to have a closing prayer now for the services here this morning. Almighty God, Father of Heaven, we look to you this morning uh, as our God and our Father and the one that we seek all uh, uh, guidance from. Uh, we know that uh, uh, everything that we need uh, can be met by you. We are so thankful that we were able to come together here today and that collectively, uh, even across the uh, airwaves, we're able to get together in your name and uh, uh, worship you. Uh, we pray that what we have done this morning has been uh, pleasing in your sight. Uh, we, uh, we hope that you will uh, be with us always. We, we pray that uh, you will uh, be with this congregation as we navigate uh, these unique times. We pray that uh, you will bind us together and, uh, and continue to keep us strong as a congregation, uh, unified under the common cause of spreading your word. Uh, we need to, we continue to need uh, the fellowship that you instruct us to have in the scriptures. Um, help us to accomplish that in whatever manner <coughs> is available to us. Again, I pray for each and all of those that are uh, home this morning, not able to come, uh, be with them and guide them. Uh, protect us all. Be with the uh, leadership of this country as they work to try and uh, solve this uh, issue of the coronavirus. And we know that uh, you can guide, uh, guide them and the, uh, the scientists and the doctors through this in a way that uh, we can conquer this and overcome. Strengthen all of us. Uh, help us to lean upon you at all times. We pray now that you will be with, it as we, uh, with us as we depart from this place. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.